my god, this is the worst video idea ever. Yo, it's Yuji. Welcome back. We are not in the closet. We are in the kitchen because we are doing a special fucking video. Yes, sir. I have had this video planned out since the day I started this channel because this is one of the craziest fucking stories I've ever read in my life. Basically, we are going to eat a hundred blazing chicken nuggets that I made myself. That's right, because I'm a college kid. That means I got zero money, right? So what I did, spent $15 on two whole chickens, butchered them, chopped them up, fried it, and then bought some blazing sauce from B-dubs, and now we have this. This is definitely over a hundred nuggets, and I'm fucking terrified, and God damn it, it sucks. We have milk for emergencies, but this is if I'm a bitch, and that means I lose and accept defeat, but I ain't no loser. And plus, we are recording on my phone, but the iPhone mics are shit. That's why we have the original microphone right here. It's great, and luckily, I have like a I don't even know, uh, I think like a 12 foot XLR cable, and I, that's the best investment I ever made in my life. And of course, we got the weed sock. So, without further ado, we have the script right here, because yes, I have notes, not a script, I have notes for George Joestar. That is right, ladies and gentlemen. Son of Jonathan, father of Joseph. So the in-between story of part one and two. So basically, I'm not gonna explain anything about Jojo, Jojo. All right, you have to just understand what that is because I'm not spending an extra hour explaining what the fuck JoJo's and stands are, okay? And you just need to understand everything from far part one all the way to part seven. And disclaimer, I have read this uh, book uh, two and a half years ago and a lot of the stories jumbled up in my brain but I remember all the crazy shit and that's what we're gonna try and explain. So, the worst video idea of my life. I am terrified right now and I swear to God if my phone runs out of storage, I'm gonna kill somebody. I don't wanna do this guys, but thank you so much for subscribing. I'm so happy we reached 100 subscribers. This is a terrible video, but here we go. First nugget. I don't think it's that bad. Nope, it's, this is gonna suck. Okay. Also, if you have an issue about people eating with the food in their mouth, fuck you. I have to. Starting off, chapter one, George Joestar. We meet our uh, the main character, George, who is a kid. He's like 10 years old, living in Los Palmos, Mexico, the uh, Canary Islands, right? Because that is where Erina ended up after the whole boat in incident ended at the end of part one. Oh no, this is gonna. Oh no, we're, t we're taking this off. We're not prepared. George spelled with a J because Jojo gets bullied by Antonio Torres and his gang, a bunch of other kids from his school. Oh no, this is hot. And basically they call him Jorge and he's all like, eh, I'm not Jorge, I'm George. He's like, shut the fuck up, George. And at the time, his lover slash childhood friend, well not lover yet, but his childhood friend Lisa Lisa is there, always protecting his ass. Oh no, it was really spicy. Fuck, I thought I had a good spice on this. Anyways, Lisa Lisa is always pay, t taking care of Jorge, George, and he hates it because he's a fucking guy going through fucking puberty. All right. Oh my God. Oh no. That was a saucy one. One night, one of the kids died, is murdered. They only find his skin. And they're like, oh my God, what the hell happened? And all the kids start blaming George because George is a white guy. And no one likes the white guy. Right? Because they're in like the Canary Islands. Everyone speaks Spanish. Ugh. But then, one of the exchange students named Skumojiku. Keep in mind how he's spelled, okay? It's very important. Oh no! Uh, is stands up for George. He's like, no, he did not do it. And we shall prove it. So there's a little. I'm the mystery gang. Oh, they become the mystery gang. The mystery gang gets together, find out there's a vampire on the island. Oh, oh, they find out there's a yeah, vampire on the island, sneaks into the school. Lisa Lisa pulls up, fucking, Final Blue Overdrive, boom, fucking. And then this is when we learned that Lisa Lisa has been training oh, without George how to use Hummel. And I'm not explaining Hummel. Oh my fuck, this is hard. This is so much harder than I thought it would be. After the crisis, everyone learned that Hort, George didn't kill the kid. Oh. He makes a best friend, Tsukumojuku, they become homies. So then he goes home to his mom, or uh, yeah, yeah, his mom, Erina, right? Jonathan's wife and her maid, Penelope. 
Penelope is very important to keep her in mind. She has a stan, all right? But she doesn't know, nor does George know that it's a stan. But it's basically a locked room. And like, anyone that ends up around oh Penelope when she's really stressed out ends up in this locked room because she activates her stand without knowing it and then they die basically like a suicide box oh my fucking god this is so spicy fuck uh and then they talk and they're like oh my god mom like I made, I made a best friend and those vampires vampires are real can you believe it mom and then Erina starts freaking out starts thinking about G Dio right because Dio's the whole reason why she ended up in the Canary Islands and Jonathan's dead fuck oh my god oh Oh, oh my god. And then Erina shows George and Lisa Lisa something special. They show Jonathan's head because she had it in her basement of the house the entire time. And they're like, what the fuck? That's my dad? So fucking George is freaking out and shit. Right, he doesn't like it. And then we learn what happened with Erina after the boat blew up. It basically Dio was taking care of her in the middle of the ocean. While he rested in the coffin. Crazy shit. I'm not explaining it. Chapter 2. Oh my god. We meet George Joestar from Japan. Morio. Not yet though. Oh, I didn't even fucking explain it. Alright, uh, and then basically, uh, previous. Chapter 1. George Joestar, Canary Islands. Uh, Tsukumojuku suddenly disappears. And he gets really sad. And then, uh, end of chapter. Chapter 2. George Joestar from Japan. He's a detective. In his 20s. Fuck, this is so much food. And basically one day he's on a stroll, finds a house flooded inside, not outside. Clear day. And he's like, what the fuck is going on? Sees the kid smiling around inside. And he's like, what is happening? So he breaks it. And then the kid comes out, holding a briefcase. And then we find out it's Tsukumotsuku. And Tsukumotsuku is all like, what? what? Where am I? And he's all like, he's like, you're in Japan. He's like, He's like, are you okay? He's like, what is your name, sir? He's like, my name is George. And Tsukumojiku says, so this is what you plan to do beyond, beyond, motherfuckers. All right, keep in mind, beyond. Beyond is basically going to be God, but not God, but basically also Tsukumojiku, but not Tsukumojiku. It'll make sense later. Watch the end of the video. Oh my God. And then basically, uh, Tsukumojiku is taken to the hospital by George, and George is like, what the fuck is going on around here? So then, uh, oh, I'm getting all salivated. Um, and then George is like, I need to ask questions. So he pulls up to the hospital, finds Tsukumotsuku dead. And a note next to his, on his bed saying, come to Morio, Kita Yoshikage. Yes, sir. Oh, so it's all idea that Kita Yoshikage killed Tsukumotsuku. So now George from Japan is headed towards Morio. Oh, chapter whatever. All right, and keep in mind, from now on, odd, odd chapter numbers is talking about George from the Canary Islands and like timeline George, right? Even numbered chapters is George from Japan who is currently headed towards Morio. We're gonna stick with George from Japan real quick. Motherfucker pulls up to Morio with the address to Kishibe Rohan's house. He doesn't know Kishibe Rohan though. He tries to enter and he, and because he's trying to find Kida Yoshikage, right? And then fucking crazy shit. Long story short, sh the long story short, Kishibe Rohan still has Heaven Door. Heaven Door's whatever. George from George does not know what fucking stands are, and he learns about it when he meets. Uh, oh my god! When he meets Rohan, and basically he meets um, the alternate timeline of Josuke. No, not even Josuke. A fucking Okuyasu, his brother, and Koichi. And they all have different stands. Basically, fucking Koichi has a Takekopta. Which is stupid as fuck, I know. Like, Blue Thunder, that's his stand name. Oh, keep in mind, all these stand names are pretty cool because they're not based off songs, they're based off movie or TV shows. And I rock proof of it, so fuck yeah. Oh my god. Oh, this hurts. And then, um, uh, uh, one of the other guys, Nijimura, uh, Fuku or Fukushi, there's Ni Nijimura Fukushiki and, uh, Murio Taisu. All right, we're gonna say, we're gonna say Fu and Mu. All right, there's Fu and Mu. Fu has NYPD blues. His stand is basically a fat, white police officer from New York. That is right. He's just a short, fat, white guy. Keep it by, this is a book, not a manga. And that is what the description said. And then, Mu has blue dolphin, or grand blue. That's his stand. Basically a dolphin. He could summon a dolphin, he rides it. Stupid stands, right? 
But basically, oh, this is so much pain. Basically, the house is a tesseract and also a stand. I'll get to it. Um, Raimi, Sugimoto Raimi, if you remember from part four, the ghost girl, uh, she is basically alive but not and possessing the house, which is a stand. Or no, that house is her stand. It's called Arrow Cross House, right? And basically, it's a tesseract because it, uh, it has five dimensions. Like, you enter a door, you exit out the sit, you enter another room. That looks exactly like the room you're in. And it goes on for five layers. Keep in mind, five layers. Five layers is very important. Oh my god. You know, maybe I'll have like a like little check mark of important marks. Anyways, crazy shit goes down. Uh, George learns about the house. He learns about the, how, how, the, how it functions. He's a detective, alright? So he has to know this shit. Meets Kishibe Rohan. Talks to him. You know, like yada yada yada. And the whole reason why Kishibe Rohan was like in hiding within the house was because... Kita Yoshikage is trying to kill him, right? So if this isn't a rule, oh, fuck. oh my god, I'm trying so hard to keep up, guys. Uh, anyways, basically, shit happens in Morio, school's on fire, and they're like, oh shit, we gotta go help this school, and then they find out that it was Kishibe Rohan that set the house on fire, but, but like, he had an accomplice, right? Ugh. Ugh. Shit goes ha shit happens. I don't remember, honestly. I remember they doused the house, and then they were like, Oh no, we have to get, like, something bad is about to happen. We have to get- Oh no! I remember now! Okay, this shit's crazy, alright? What basically happens is, the house is on fire- The school is on fire, they save everyone inside, luckily. But it doesn't even matter, because some crazy shit happens, because fucking George is all like, I don't like the feeling of this, right? And then, all of a sudden, a sudden earthquake, and they're like, what the fuck is happening? And then all of Morio is broken off the mainland of Japan. Mm-hmm. So, what happened? Fuck. Also, I'm gonna probably be mainly in George from Japan's timeline. Because what's happening to George from Los Palmos, uh, Canary Islands, is his story is very like very normal. It's not a crazy story. I mean, at the most part, he meets a he makes a friend when he goes off to like High school, who's like, uh, what's his name? Can, um, Steven Motorize. He's like the son of like a motorizing company, or based off a of real guy, John Moore uh, Barbozon. That's a real person, by the way. He's like his nephew, and basically, Steven has wings, but it's not a stand. He just straight up has wings and can fly. He has a younger sister named Darling, who's just a straight up bitch, and is like trying to have George fall in love with her, but also not. I'm making zero dent. Anyways, whatever. Back, back, back to George from Japan. Morio's an island. Luckily, the, all of Morio up to Kishibe's house, or no, yeah, Rohan's house was broken off, floating in the middle of the ocean. And they're like, what the fuck is going on? They look around, nothing's there, right? Just the ocean. And then they see another landmass. And they're like, oh, what is that? George pulls out the binocular. It's fucking Italy. Italy is floating as well. And in fact, heading towards Morio, Fuck! This is so spicy! Ah! And then Morio... And, and George is freaking out because he's like, What the fuck is happening? Why is Italy heading straight towards us? And then over here, NYPD Blues fucking taking pictures and shit. Because he's just catching the fucking Pashone gang committing a fucking bunch of crimes, right? And basically what, MP what NYPD's Blues stand ability is, is whenever he, wit whenever he witnesses a, gr a crime... Fuck, I need milk. I don't care, fuck you guys. Oh my god, 2%. Ugh. Uh, NYT, whenever, whatever crime NYPD Blues witnesses, he could record, send it to any federation, government federation, and have them arrested, or, or, or properly detained. So he's just taking picture of all the gang, and they're like, what the fuck is going on? And then what ends up happening is, Italy crashes into Morio, but not in the way you would expect. Because flash news, baby! The islands are fucking insects. That's right. The islands are giant insects. It goes underneath. What basically happens in Italy is climbing up on Moria. And there's just giant insect legs. Six legs. Not eight because then that would be a <sighs> And then on top. Oh my god. And then he's like, what is happening, right? No one knows what the fuck is happening. And basically, Italy and the Pashona gang starts hijacking Morium, kidnapping, killing people, right? And so fucking George 
and the others are just running away. He's like, we gotta get to the house. Until suddenly, George gets a phone call on his phone, and it's from Giorno fucking Giovanno, bro. Or Giorno calls him up, and he's all like, he's like, George's like, who is this? He's like, I am the leader of the Pashona gang. I'm the mob boss. You will come to me now, or I'll kill everybody. And you're like, whoa, what the fuck, Giorno? When were you a bad guy like that, right? Fuck. <sighs> anyway, shit happens. He goes to Giorno, and Giorno is all like, I have a mission for you, Mr. George. I have heard, uh, I have heard, heard things from you from, uh, from my boss. So he's all like, oh shit, okay, so Diavolo is still in the equation. <sighs> and then, what happens? Following that, fuck, following that, oh my god. He's all like, you have a cert, you have a certain mission you must accomplish. And he's like, all right, well, tell me what it is. And he's all like, you have to kill Kishibe Rohan. And he's like, what? I can't kill him. He's my, he's my Nakama. And he's like, and to make sure you do the job, I'm taking, I'm having Nanancha go with you. So Nanancha pulls up. <laughs> he's a dick. I mean, why wouldn't he be? And he's like, all right, cool. I need a chair. Oh, my legs hurt. And then, but then all of a sudden, George and Anansha were teleported from a phone call because he got another phone call on his phone by none other than Skumojuku. What? I thought he died. That's what I thought too, man. And then he's all like, hello, George. And he's all like, who is this? He's like, this is your best buddy, Tsukumojuku. And he's all like, how'd you get this number? And he's like, I've always had your number. And then what ended up happening is like, you have other plans by beyond. And boop! Him and Anansha were teleported to, and you guys wanna guess where? I just write, space. Motherfucker is on a rocket ship to Mars. <sighs> With three other people. Poochie, Funnier Valentine, and Sandman. <sighs> and Sandman, not Soundman. Keep that in mind. Yeah. And it's funnier Valentine, not funny Valentine. He is funny Valentine's son. And then we learn that funnier Valentine has a son as well called the funniest Valentine. And he's the first person in the world to ever earn the have the title the in their name or the. So currently the funniest Valentine is the president of the United States. If you haven't read part seven, fucking good luck understanding that. Oh no. <coughs> oh god, I got spicy saliva up my nose. Oh, oh, this is the worst video idea ever. Thanks for subscribing, everyone. Oh, and then, oh my god. So, at first, Nanan's just freaking out. He's like, what the fuck is going on, right? George is trying to take, keep a head straight, control the situation. Everyone on the ship, funny or Valentine's ready to fucking kill. He has a gun on him and everything. He's like, you will explain to me how you know about this secret mission. Oh, my ears. Everything hurts. Oh my god. Everything hurts. Oh, just fucking give me the whole roll. And... Oh, and then George is like, I don't know. I don't even know what the fuck this secret mission is. Please help us. We don't know anything. We are not a threat to you or the United States of America. And my question is at this time, though, is how the fuck are they understanding each other? Because they're from America. George is from fucking Japan. But... Who cares, it's Jojo. He looks outside, George looks outside the fucking rocket ship window and sees Mars. Oh boy, that is right, baby. They are headed towards Mars because they're on a secret mission to uh, locate this secret fucking signal they've been getting from Mars and figure out what it was. Uh, and next to the rocket ship, there's a giant moon. So they're like, oh shit, we gotta make sure we don't crash into that. And then after bullshit plot story, plot line, the funniest Valentine came to a conclusion that the person has been sending signals from Mars is none other than Cars. That is right. Cars from part two, the ultimate vampire, the ultimate being. It basically, Cars is staring at them like cold and he sees a rocket and cause he knows, he fucking knows man, that all of this was supposed to happen because all of a sudden we see this like single line coming down from the moon to Cars. And he's like, that's so weird. And then the moon slowly turns and faces the rocket and it's a fucking giant eyeball. And you're like, what the fuck? And you learn. Oh, you learned, guys. You fucking learn that. Oh, God. Oh, my God. You learn that that moon 
is made up of multiple universes of cars. That is right. It was, it came down by who knows, but 100% beyond that it would be the 14th iteration, 14th universe that cars will be able to escape. Who gave him that information? Cars himself, because you know how he's the ultimate being, so he knows the ultimate knowledge, yada yada, but he is not beyond. Oh my god. And then cars is all like, and then we learn that every time cars will just exist in every universe, be stuck on Mars, have no way to escape. Every universe, that's repeating, repeating. Every time the new cars pulls up to Mars, bars, he j they just consume each other and get bigger and bigger until they became that giant mass. Hold up. Oh shit, dude, I'm recording a video right now. Oh my god, it's Dean. You making wings? No, you don't want it. Oh, fuck. It's so worry. I got like another hour. Oh my fuck. Oh. Anyways, I got distracted. Where was I? When cars old eventually infiltrates the boat or the rocket ship. Ah. Oh no, it's so spicy. Do you want a wing, Dean? Oh yeah, by the way, that was Dean. I guess he made his cameo in my 100 Skyrim special. He's my old former roommate. Anyways, Cars infiltrates this ship, kills everyone, excluding George and Naransha, because they make a fucking deal. But before that, Sandman has this hype-ass moment, because you know how the entire planet of Mars is made up of basically sand and dirt? He just, like, creates this giant fucking structure to just, like, crush Cars. Dope as shit failed, because, I mean, Cars is the ultimate being. Uh, and then, uh, George is making a deal with Cars. He's all like, we will take you back to Earth if you don't kill us, yada yada. Now, Nansha at this time is trying to kill Cars with his stand, Das Boots. Das Boots is basically the same as Arrowhead, or uh, Aerosmith, except instead of an airplane, he has tiny submarines, which explode in contact. Very cool. Oh, anyways, dude, I don't even know what the fuck happens. After that, I don't know, I don't remember how they get back. Oh, I remember. Tsukumojiku, this again, this motherfucker calls up, and he's all like, yo. How's everything? And he's all like, fucking dude, there's some crazy ass guy in here trying to kill us. He's like, oh, perfect. That's what you needed. Let's take you back. And boy, they're back. Oh. oh, no, wait. I remember now. Actually, they do kill cars, as in they kick him out of the fucking ship with dust boots because he puts dust boots into his bloodstreams, multiple of them, and blows them up from the inside out. And then they kick him off the ship. And then they're like, cool, we're safe, we gotta get out of here, how? And then he gets the phone call from Tsukumojuku, and then they teleport back to Morio slash Italy, which is a giant fucking insect. Oh. Oh my fuck, it's so hard. And then, God and then, everyone's freaking out on Mario and Italy. Jorno was all like, where the fuck were you guys? It was all like, we're on Mars. It was like, what? Whatever. We got bigger fish to fry. And then you're thinking, what could be possibly bigger of a fish than the ultimate being trying to come back and destroy the world? And you learn that Kira Yoshikage was killed by who? Who knows? Well, I know, but we'll get to there. That's the whole... It's a mystery! Ah! Uh, uh, I'm in so much pain. Dude, this is like... This is definitely not 100. This is more. This is probably like 120. I need to. We're at, we're, at a, we're at a good pace. We're like 30 minutes into the video. Oh! This is down like 8 right now. Dude. 8 right now? Fucking Dean. You have to. It's really a drill. You guys are down. All right, quick intermission. That's the that's where the cliffhanger is. Gita Yoshikage is dead inside the Tesseract house. Who killed him? Fuck! Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I am in so much pain. I try. I'm uh, gonna throw up. Oh my fuck! This is not a good sign. Uh, oh my fuck! This is the worst video idea ever. Oh my god. Are we still recording? Oh my god. This was the worst video idea. I probably said that like five times now. Oh. Okay. Okay. They're very poor decision. <laughs> Alright. Continue. George and Nanansha pull up to the Tesseract house. Everyone's there. Giorno. Pucci. Abaccio. Bucciarati. Uh, Kishi, uh, Rohan. Everyone. And in the middle of the room, Kira Yoshika get dead. Which fucking sucks because he didn't do much. Except blow up a school. <sighs> uh, George does his fucking detective work. Figured out who killed him. 
God. No. Oh my God, I'm a fucking liar. I just remember something so cool. All right, so they don't kill cars. I just remember they try to kill him by putting many boats in his body and tr blow him up from the inside out. That didn't work because he's the ultimate being. And what it ended up happening, they just had to take cars with him, with them, right? And really cool thing was that he can kill, <clears throat> like he can kill stand users and absorb their stands and create a stronger version of their stand. So what ended up happening was like he killed Poochie, right? And then he created a white snake. It was like four arms, two headed. And like clearly stronger. Uh, uh, so yeah. I don't, honestly, I don't remember what the fuck they did to cars or how, where he's at during this whole murder situation. But something happens. I don't know. <sighs> they eventually get rid of him and then they pull back to the universe. They're originally, or they're the place they're originally from. They're pulled back to Morio. They're at the Tezrak house. Different Poochie is there, meaning that it was a different timeline. Where are you headed? Yeah, come back in like an hour. Yeah, it seems like a bad time. Seems this like was a, a terrible time, time you yeah. came. Oh, thank God he's gone. Oh, uh, the different timeline Poochie is there. They figure out the person who killed them had to be the boss. Not Giorno, but a Diavolo, right? And we're like, where is Diavolo? Where is this guy? Where is he? Right? But then we learned. Oh, boy, we learned. Dopio isn't in this world, right? Because we know that Dopio's Diavolo is the alternate personality. So who the fuck is Diavolo's alternate personality? Ooh. Who else but Giorno? Holy shit. Major plot twist. <laughs> Jonah's a killer. Jonah's Diablo. Diablo Jonah. Buchadati and the gang are pissed. They try to kill him. But then, who? but then, something, something happens. I don't remember how, but basically, Pucci attains heaven through the connections of the 14 words, you know. The, or I have it written down here, so we have Spiral Cell Case, Rhinoceros Beetle, Desolate Rose, Fig Tart, Rhinoceros Beetle, Dolorosa, Rhinoceros Beetle, Singularity Point, Giotto, Angel, Hydrogea, Rhinoceros Beetle, Singularity Point, and then Ultimate Being. Alright, Spiral Staircase, the Tesseract, Rhinoceros Beetle, Morio turned into it, Desolate Row, I don't remember, but okay, I will say, George Joestar does the coolest thing with trying to explain the 14 secret words of attaining heaven that were left in Dio's journal. Right, Thick Tart was really random because it was when, oh, I remember now. Yeah, they shoot, yeah, they kick out cars from the rocket ship and his headed towards Morio at like top speeds as a meteorite. And then as it's burning up, fucking Poochie points out, he's all like, oh, did you notice something? And he's all like, what, to George? And George's like, what? And he's all like, while Carter's body was burning up, he smelled like Thick Tarts. It's like, what the fuck? That's that Rhinos Beetle, back to Italy and whatever. Dolorosa, I don't remember. Rhinos Beetle again, they're back in Morio and shit. Singularity Point, which comes down to something. I will get to that. The Giotto was actually the name ugh, of the ugh, of the rocket ship that Funnier Valentine and the gang were on. Angel revolves back to Steven. Holy shit. I can't believe it. And then Hydrogena is a type of flower. Uh, well, I should be again back to Mario. There's another singularity point. Can you guess where? That's right. Kira Yoshikage and Jorna. Because what ends up happening? It. Pucci attains heaven. Fucking made in heaven. <laughs> Traveling light speeds around the Tesseract, kills Giorno, goes back, and then creates a fucking portal in time. Can you fucking believe that? And then what ends up happening is that George is kicked into it, and Pucci disappears. Back to George from the Canary Island. Oh boy, this is all gonna make sense, I swear. During all this mayhem, every other chapter, George from the Islands. Uh, is now a grown ass man. He's in the military. And all of a sudden, a great war is happening. AKA World War One. 
And World War One's crazy because there's vampires. And basically, George's hometown. Oh no, I forgot. Well, basically, George now works for the British military, I think, or America. I don't remember one or the other. I'm pretty sure Britain. Oh, no, oh, no. He's on the eye. Uh, he's fighting for the military. Vampires are attacking Britain. Him and Lisa, Lisa have the cool ass fucking moment where they're killing a bunch of. Oh, killing so many vampires. Oh my god. And then like, basically, he's a George is one of the best fighter pilots in the world. So he's there da, 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 on the fighter pan. Lisa Lisa is bouncing around using hormone. Okay. Uh, uh, eventually the war goes down and they kill all vampires. Lisa Lisa and George are very happy together. Oh, oh. But... Let me mention one thing. Let's backtrack a little bit. Because when they were kids, uh, one day when George was a kid hanging out with Steven and all that jazz, he got a phone call from Tsukumojuku as well. And he got teleported to the caves where Lisa Lisa was with fucking, what's his name, Straight? Where they're in the caves, you know, trying to find the sacred stone. The bloody stone. That's right. From part two. That the pillar bed, aka cars, was a trying to attain, become the ultimate being. Uh, so yeah, that happened. Uh, and then anyways, back back forward in time. Oh, uh, they find. Uh, no, what am I talking about? Oh my god, back forward in time. George and Lisa Lisa are in love each other. They're grown ass adults. They're very happy and they're getting married. Oh my god, yay! Ugh. And all this Beyond shit happening in between the story. God fucking damn it. Fuck Beyond, bro. <sighs> oh my god. And then, oh. And then basically, what's happening is George is about to get married, but then he gets suddenly attacked <sighs> by a vampire. What? I thought they killed them all. Dude, it's fucking JoJo's, man. Oh. George is dying, and he's all like, oh no, what did I do? What would Sukumochika do? And then he realized something. The way his name is spelled. Or you could see it as a different way. Three crosses. Three holy crosses. Oh. Uh, and George started thinking, bro. Bro uses his brain to work. He's like, I met jo I met I met Skimojiku once, very first time. When he hid, he mentioned beyond. Second time, when he teleported me to Lisa Lisa, he mentioned beyond. How come there hasn't been a third instance yet? Woo! That's when all of a sudden, boom! Skumonchiku pulls up. George is fucking dying, bleeding out and shit. He's all like, help me. And Skumonchiku's like, oh yeah, I'll help you. In a bit though. Because Beyond has plans for you. Sweet! Bro gets teleported away, but everyone believes he's dead. Lisa Lisa's pissed, has Joseph in her belly, but George didn't know that in time, at the time. So Lisa Lisa and it goes into her arc of killing all vampires, yada yada, how she ends up in part two. And Erina and Penelope were all sad. Back to George from Japan. Oh my god! There's so much. I hope you understand how much there is. There's like an ungodly amount. I can't. Worst idea ever. The war. Ugh, terrible. Terrible idea. Yeah. Tsukumotsuku is beyond? We're not certain. At least I'm not certain. Because that part was never properly explained. However, I feel like Tsukumotsuku is like just the messenger? Because he always mentions how Beyond has plans for for others. He's not like, oh, I have Beyond. I have other plans. Anyways, whew. George from Japan is now somewhere new. He doesn't know where. Now, where the fuck am I? This is like a desolate land. A lot of broken down places. Suddenly gets attacked by, attacked by a vampire. And he's like, wow! What the fuck? Oh, God. Eventually, he finds a house. Where's the house leading? Ooh! Whose house is it? Ooh! Who's the sweet old white lady? It's Arena and Penelope. How? 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 How is 
is he there? But it's all making sense now. Both timelines are intertwining. I'm in so much. Uh, I have to power through, power through. Both, both are there. Both exist. No. Uh, Aaron and Penelope are like, who are you? Why are you trying to get in our house? You're clearly not a vampire, but you could be a thief. And he's like, no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm neither. My name is George Joestar. And I don't, I don't, I'm from Japan. And I don't know how I got here. And Aaron is very confused. So is Penelope. Because, and Penelope is pissed off. Because she's all like, how dare you speak of the young lord's name like that? How do you know George? And he's like, I am George. What do you mean? And then Aaron is like, wait. Wait. I know. And he's like, what do you mean you know? What? He's like, I gotta end the place, Dad. Is Komochi guys gonna keep it up with Erina as well? About Beyond or some shit? Uh, anyways, all of a sudden, uh, he realizes he's in the alternate timeline. It's Erina and Penelope. Lisa Lisa went off to kill people. And he's all like, do you know which way I should go? Yada yada. Something happens, long story short. Erina and Penelope and George. No! Holy shit, I just remembered. Woo! Long story short, Funny Valentine pulls up to the house out of nowhere. What? Funny Valentine? Where did he come from? And we learned, oh, we learned that Funny Valentine had connections with Dio this entire time. That is right, using fucking Dutty Deeds, done that to cheap, or F F D4C, one of the coolest fucking stands in existence, in my opinion, like my favorite stand. Pulls up. He's all like, Mr. Joestar, I have been waiting to meet you. Or we have been waiting your arrival. He's like, what's the meaning of this? I'm like, oh, please, please, no harm, no foul. You will just be joining me and uh, your two other friends along. Oh, uh, basically, uh, funny Valentine is just asking George a bunch of questions about if he's figured it out. And George answers with the correct answer, and Funny Valentine's delighted more and more. He's like, yes, he knows, he knows. Yes, you have done very well so far. Because apparently Dio knew everything. Why? Because it's fucking Dio. And then, oh my god. And then, and then, uh, some crazy shit happens. Remember Poochie? When I had killed Giorno? Well, he took the body with him. Oh boy, some crazy shit happened. If you guys remember Antonio, the guy who bullied George when he was a kid, back in the Los Palmos Island, there he is. He's a giant monster, like a giant skin monster. And the final piece for him to be so ginormous was Giorno. Yeah, you may be asking, Yuji, Yuji, how does this relate to the story? I don't know. They added it though. Some cool shit. Just confuse the fuck out of you even more. Make sure you realize that this world is bizarre. It's so bizarre. Oh. And then, and then, eventually they pull up to the spot. The final singularity point. That is right. Which is apparently Antonio all along. Or Giorno. Oh, Giorno. My god. Giorno oh, was like the final piece, right? And now there's this giant mass. Oh, I don't even know how the fuck this happened. But Funny Valentine realized the situation and was like, oh, this is cr- Oh shit, this is crazy. I need to get out of here. So he dips. Poochie was killed by Antonio or Jono because of the- he was just completely smushed. He's like, what? I thought I did everything I did. Dio, why? Why? Uh, and then- Holy shit. George was a fucking five-headed move. He's like, we need to go inside him. And Aaron and Penelope are like, what? What the fuck? Why would we do that? Well, like, trust me. You just met me. You can trust me. Oh, they agree. And they go inside. And then my fucking guy. Guess what's on the other side? None other than fucking Dio. And guess what he's standing over? The corpse of Jesus fucking 
Christ. Oh my god. Where do I even begin about this whole plot line? If you haven't read part 7, you fucking better. Yeah, this shit's fucking crazy. And ultimately, Dio is trying to attain the Trinity. And apparently that's a stand. Or it would fucking... Because remember how Jesus is a stand user, or technically a stand, or a stand enhancer? Well, I think they just named Jesus the Trinity, right? So it would make sense. So then Dio was, was about to decapitate himself from Jonathan's body, put it onto Jesus' body. Oh my god. But then, boom! George and Arina and Penelope all pull up. And he's like, not so fast, motherfucker. And Dio's like, what is the meaning of this? And then, fucking, not only that, Skumochiku also shows up out of nowhere. And he's like, oh, I also got a gift for you. Boy, who else is it? The other George from the island. Holy shit. And Arena and Penelope are freaking the fuck out because this motherfucker's still in his fucking wedding gown and shit. And he's like, where have you been? What, what? George, we thought you died. He's all like, what day is it? I thought I was supposed to get married. And George and George are looking at each other like, huh. You no, know, they're just like clearly like confused. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, yep. 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 Yeah. And then from here, it kind of gets really stupid because, man, it was really dumb. Because Skumojiko was just like, oh, here's a little gift for you, George, from the islands. Boy, Lisa, Lisa. Here's your wife, and Lisa Lisa's crying. She's like, oh my god, I think you died, yada yada. And then Dio is over here, just freaking the fuck out. Not killing anyone. Now I'm wondering, why didn't Dio ever kill any of them? Because he clearly could have. I mean, he had the world. Just fucking, the world! You know? That would have been so smart. But he didn't do that, for whatever situation. And what ultimately ended up happening was George. I think George, no, I think George from Japan. I could be one of the Georges. Fucking cuts his head off, cuts Dio's head off. And then somehow, and then Erina had Jonathan's head with her the whole time. I, to I totally forgot to mention this. She had Jonathan's head with her the whole time. And he, and she was just like, oh, his body. And then just, whoop, and then boom, Jonathan's back. And he's alive. And then George is all like, what a... George from the islands, all like, this is, and it's like, this is one big Joe Star reunion. Like, some fucking Looney Tunes ass shit just occurred. And they're like, well, that just happened. <laughs> fucking Seinfeld shit. Ugh. And then, yeah. And then ultimately, they killed jo they killed Dio. They killed all the bad guys. Tsukumojuku's there, and he's all like, he's like, good job. Every single one of you, you have managed to stop Dio from attaining the Trinity. And then, happily ever after, they go back. Everyone goes back to their respective worlds and universe. George, from Japan, ends up in Japan. <clears throat> the whole Morio in Italy breaking apart thing didn't happen? I don't... I don't know. I don't know. Because, like, when he came back, Mario was back in his place, and Italy was up back in his place. How oh, that happened. Oh, and that is how the story of Joe Joestar ends. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all so much for the 100 subscribers. We Let's keep it going, guys. We got... All right, like... I'm not finishing these. This is way too much. I'm gonna throw up. But I'm definitely gonna not waste it because I'm Asian. Wasting food is not in my language. I'll figure out some use for this. Uh, and then, uh, but genuinely, thank you all so much for the 100 subscribers. Let's keep it coming, man. Let's let's keep doing this. I finally talked about George Joestar. I'm sure you guys understood none of it. Because half the time I was suffering, the other half is just a crazy fucking story that makes zero sense. Uh, and yeah, my god. Next, next celebration video will definitely be at a thousand subscribers when I can be monetized. We'll see if that even ever happens. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. If you watched all the way to the end of this video, you are a real one, and I love you. 
special message. Uh, yeah, no, I'm done. Oh my god. I don't know if I, have, if I have anything else I need to say, but it's been Yuji. Thanks for watching. Uh. Oh. Oh.